Yes, so I'm going to now bring up the fantastic man who is so exemplary of black love in all that he dedicates his efforts to. And I feel, I feel like nothing he puts his, his time and energy into goes wrong. I just say he, but it's also his partner as well, because there is a unit. And he's brought his two children here today as well. You see his daughter in the front. She's just staring blankly at me. Wave to everybody, say hi. <laughs> Everyone give her love. She needs to hear you. Come on, people. Hail up the princess and the prince at the front there. He's just playing these games, so it's cool. <laughs> Um, so, Davis, he um, also is responsible for Love is Just a Verb, um, Manhood Academy, which has been just rocking London for the past year or so, and we have Womanhood Academy that has also birthed from he and many others, Mind Pool. So, without further ado, here to talk about black dating and relationships, the phenomenal, the fantastic, the, fantastic, the incredible. incredible. Are we ready to stump our feet? Are we ready? Let's start it. Come on, let's stump our feet, stump our feet. Let's get our hands clapping. Let's holler. Yes. Lovely. Make some noise for Davis J. Williams. I thought it was going to be some music or something, boy. <laughs> How's everyone doing? All right. How long have I got? Just so 20 minutes, yeah? Oh, no, no, that's all good. I don't need that, though. I don't need that. No, it's all right, it's all right. So I just want to let everyone know before I get into the discussion, I've got my daughter here, Michaela, my beautiful firstborn, and she just, this week, she got her first book. So she's an author, and... Um, <laughs> so, what she has, she's got the prototype of the book. So, we're building a website for her. So, I want to get as many pictures with the family, with my daughter, with the book as possible. So, at any point, when any of you feel like you want to just approach her, she's got a camera, you've got my phone, and yeah, just take a few pictures. I would so much appreciate that. Is that okay? Yeah, thank you so much, family. Well done, Kay. She's done a mannequin challenge there. <laughs> All right, so. Um, yeah, my name is Davis Williams. I do a few different things that I'm not going to get into today. Um, one being Manhood Academy, another one being The Naked Truth. I'm also a raw food chef. I did say I weren't going to get into it, but I just can't, you know. Please, family, like, I know I'm amongst family. Can you just, like, look at the person next to you and just embrace them, like, some bodily contact, whether it's a hug or whatever it is. Give them a high five. It's so important. Okay, 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 okay. Good, 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 good. And um, for me, like, this is important as well. Um, today, what we're going to be focusing on is love is just a verb. Um, that's a social movement that myself and a few of the young people that I work with founded, I think, about 10 years ago. And it was birthed in Dominica. That's where my family's from. And who's from Dom? Wow, there's more than one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, uh, and when I went there, there you know, you know I, I found it was very foreign, foreign because I was walking down the road and people were like greeting me, like, I don't know who you are. And they were showing me love. Over here in London, that was, we just don't do that. So, what, say that again? Anymore, you know? Do you know? So, what the love is is a verb is, is a social movement, and what it does it is it encourages people to get out of their comfort zone. We believe that the magic happens outside your comfort zone. And today's discussion is going to be around that. It's not going to be around dating per se, but I will definitely touch on that. Um, so the journey started, um, I think this was 2010. Um, we do a lot of events in Brent, Northwest London. Who's from Northwest here? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And um, we actually broke a record in Brent because we did a youth event planned by young people with no funding. I'm just going to show you a quick video and then I'm going to use that as the context to talk about what we're going to talk about. Is there volume on this? 
DJ. Is there volume on this? Can you? For everyone. Yeah. With the main focus Thank of Thank you, King. Being a debate on matters of the heart, hosted by educational and cultural consultant Andrew Mohammed, community activist Peaches the Edutainer, and accredited life and relationship coach Des O'Connor. We want to talk about um, self love, we want to talk about identification, we want to talk about misogyny, relationships, and we just want to start a conversation, create a dialogue within mm. the audience. And one of the main issues that um, stimulated this event was gang rape. In fact, the Office of Children's Commissioner for England recently stated that in some areas, rape was seen as normal and inevitable, particularly amongst gangs with perpetrators as young as 12 or 13. It was this, along with a shocking number of young people who have been victims of exploitation by gangs or groups, that sparked the debate. Critically acclaimed spoken word performer George the Poet attended the event to offer his guidance and tugged at the audience's heartstrings with his performance called Accidents. My girlfriend had a miscarriage. After months of morning sickness and no periods, recordings, pictures, a whole experience, all those books that we couldn't stop reading, one day she woke up and she wouldn't stop reading. I think a lot of young people fall into situations and patterns that maybe they may have grown up getting used to and thinking that such and such is normal. Um, so I think it's important that we engage them and deliberately try to shape their expectations and their, their conduct, their behaviour towards each other. I hope the event gives young people new expectations. The problem is, if you don't perceive yourself as someone who deserves better, you're not going to have those expectations. When you um, tell them to have the confidence to believe that they deserve better, they will go and get better. A BAFTA award-winning special guest who has had experience in writing authentic stories about communities and relationships attended on the day to offer his advice to the community. When we talk about relationships, young people, sex, love, we want to talk to someone we trust and whose opinion we value. So please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Noel Clark. You can make choices and you can respect yourself. If you are not afraid to be an individual then and lead your own life. On by young people. And let me tell you, like, the place had about 800 people um, in attendance, you know, talking about relationships with young people and how they view each other. It was absolutely amazing. Off the back of that, there was, um, there was this documentary. Has anyone seen this documentary? By Men in Shabazz. Um, I would encourage all of you to watch it. The young people that put on this event that you just saw was in this documentary as well, and they were very outspoken. Um, I love working with young people because they tell the truth. They will look at you and they say it as it is. With the older generation, you know, it's difficult to, you know, like we're very good at putting on a mask and pretending that everything is good, when in reality, things are not. So off the back of that event, we, did, we decided to do an evaluation. Yeah, so we was gassed, we was excited. So we went to Westfields and we was like buzzing. There was like 12 of us or so. And we wanted to dissect to see like what was good about the event. You know, what could we improve on? So on and so forth. I remember this day like it was yesterday, you know, the amount of energy that I had, it was just like, whoa! Anyway, went there now, this was in Stratford, and when we was there, we made some observations, you know? Imagine we was on the top floor where Nando's is, and there's that, is it burritos? You know that, um, that Mexican joint? And we was all there, and we had our pen and papers, and we was just there, charting like what was good, and we was getting feedback. And what we noticed was, there was a lot of black guys walking with white women. Like, this is observation, more than normal, yeah? And I think there was a married couple, literally, it weren't these two, but there was a married couple walking through Westfield, and we was like, wow, like, that's peculiar. Like, I've never seen that before. I'm from East London. I've never seen a married... Blah, 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 you know? So, to me, and, like, I'm very analytical, so I notice everything, you know, sometimes to my detriment. So when I saw this, and I'm like, wow, this is strange, you know? I'm not saying that interrelational, like this is normal, yeah? But what happened was there was a definite pattern on that day. I saw a lot of interracial relationships on that day in particular. So what we said as a collective, we said, you know what? Let's look into this. Let's investigate. Let's have an inquiry. So what we decided to do,
let me just click these buttons. So the next week, yeah, we said we're going to come down here and we're going to do some research. You know, anyone that knows me knows that I'm a bit of a troublemaker. I like getting people outside their comfort zone. I like asking questions that make people squirm, because this is my nature, you know, and I embrace it, you know. So what we did, we went there, and again, the question was, what is going on? Because there was a pattern. I'm not going to tell you what the pattern is right now. We went there to investigate, we was reflective, and we wanted to improve. So out of that discussion that we had, we was intending to create something off the back of that. So Westfields went there the following week, um, same space, there was about 10 of us. Um, we was there from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., sorry, 3 p.m., yeah? And this is what we saw, yeah? So this is the research. There were 16 mixed relationships, yeah, throughout that period. We saw 16 interracial relationships, and we saw 10 traditional, okay? Cool, no problem there. However... When it came to the interracial relationships, out of the 16, 14 of them showed physical signs, physical of contact, meaning like there was one guy, I swear to God, my man was skipping like this. He was, no, seriously, he was skipping. You know you can tell when someone's happy. All of these guys, they look so happy with their white woman. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with this, by the way, you know? I'm just saying, they were happy. He's, wow. And uh, the white woman was doing what she does, yeah? It is what it is. This is the reality. However, when it came to black love, yeah? Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah? We saw 10 traditional, yeah? Like man and woman walking. What would you say, yeah? How many out of that 10 showed signs of contact? Out of, wait, 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 wait. Zero. So we've got a pessimist here, zero. How can you, zero? Come on, like, what? Age? So in terms of the age, yeah, all of them I would say was between, you know, 50 and 25. So that kind of bracket, there was no teenagers there. We didn't see no teenagers, do you know? But, you know, and just based on your, you know, the way you've been raised and your understanding, what would you say the percentage were out of this? Like, this is the face that we pulled. I'm serious. This was the face. I was shocked. I'm, let me tell you something here. Yeah? I can't laugh because when I was younger, you would never ever see me walking and holding the hand of any girl in public. You would not see it. That just weren't me. I never, even up to today, as a man, I find it hard to show signs of affection. I'm learning because as a man, I didn't have a father figure to teach me certain things, so I just know like hard, didn't it? Like be cold. It is what it is, yeah? And I know a lot of the women that I work with as well, they are very similar. But there was zero. There was not one brother. Not one. Not one, not one. So yes, we can sit here and we can talk about black love unity, but out there, it is looking disgusting. And we, listen everyone, we have to make the change. We have to come outside our comfort zone. If we stay comfortable, it's going to get worse. I've got my little two children here, and I'm always coming out of my comfort zone. Just to show them that, yo, don't accept certain things. That is not natural. How can I be walking street with my queen, and I don't want to stand next? Huh? It just don't make no sense to me. But it does, because we're not well as a people. So we're on this journey of healing. Does that make sense, people? Yeah? All right. I'm from East London, like I said, yeah, and um, bloop, bloop, bloop. I'm from East London, I'm from East London, and I'm very sociable, do you know, I do lots of different things outside of my, um, you know, I don't just read books, you know, I do have a lot of fun, I met one of my brethren who I play football with, you know, and I said, yo fam, like, what well, well, a long time, I've seen this in school, and I told him what I was doing, I said, yo, like, I've been here for like a few hours fam, and you know, I've seen them man them like walking with white women and holding their hand, skipping. Why, why are you not holding the hand of your, 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 your partner? Like she's all the way over there, like what, what? What do you think he said? <laughs> this is the truth, yeah? This is the truth, I kid you not. Black people don't show affection, yeah? Black people. And it's good that we're all laughing, but this is very serious. Cause this means that we don't love each other. We don't love each other. 
And this is a serious, serious matter. And I'm glad that all of us are here because I'm hoping that we can create a new trend moving forward. Yeah? And that was one of the reasons why the Manhood Academy was birthed as well. This teaching young boys to have more affection, to look at someone and say, I love you. Look at the person, go to the person that you don't know and just tell them, I love you. Let's see if you can do that. Someone that you don't know. <laughs> me love you, sister. Me love you. Me love you. Okay, one second. <laughs> All right. So, I do notice when I go raving from time to time, the signs of affection, yeah, is, <laughs> there's no problems there, yeah? When vibes card, telecon, like, it's cool. But I'm talking about in public, yeah? In public, on the road, and investigate for yourself. When you not leave this place and you're walking, just have a look, just have a look, yeah? So one of the things myself and my fiance, we've got, we've got a company called um, Does Love Live Here? And there's a question because we've got a lot of, I've got a lot of friends, they're in relationships and they don't like the person. Like, is that, what are you doing in that relationship? Like, what are you on? I've got so many beautiful empresses, like, whoa, you know? And they can't find a man. I know too many dudes that, they just don't want black women. It's, it's a mess. Is a mess, is a mess. And I'm not talking about the one or two, I'm talking, it's an epidemic. It's an epidemic. You know, so we've got this company here called um, Does Love Live Here? And what we've done, we've opened up our relationship to, you know, others to say, do you know what, if you want it to work, we can have that discussion. You understand? It starts with a discussion, you know? So um, this is something, but I'm not going to talk about this re really. But what I did want to talk about today, and I think um, someone who mentioned it earlier was love languages. So throughout my journey of masculinity, I realized that, wow, I had a bad relationship with love. Bad, 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 bad. And for those who have um, experienced something as a, as a young child and is not resolved, you would understand when you grow up, you just become hardened, you learn how to protect yourself. So I've, I've had to protect myself. I can't be vulnerable out here in this world that wants to like dappy me. It's not happening. And I can't have people taking advantage of my relationships or my, my emotions. So one of the questions that we ask people is, how is love expressed in your family? In my family, love was expressed in one way. Yeah, one way, work hard. Get money, pay bills, eat food, wash, you got clean clothes? That's it, that's it. I don't think my dad ever said, son, I love you. Like, it's a myth. And even my mum, my mum is so cuddly, but she finds it hard to express herself, why? Because that's what she was taught, you know? So this through a little bit of research, you know, we decided to um, delve into the world of love languages, which some of you may know already, yeah? And this is what I wanna touch on today. And as, Basically, it may seem, I realized that I learned the way I love through my dad, primarily, who was there, but he was emotionally void. So I'm still trying to undo that and trying to find what love language works for me. I'm always telling my children I love them and so on and so forth. So one of the languages, I'm gonna whip through this, is words of affirmation, like verbal compliments. And for some of you, you might do this simple, but the person that you're with, do they even understand that to be a language of love? I find it hard, I don't say to my partner I love her often, do you know what I'm saying, I don't. I do it through more action, but I understand that her language is verbal communication. So I need to get myself uncomfortable and I need to develop that language, does that make sense? So that's the first one. The second one is like quality time, yeah? I go everywhere with my children. I don't matter how, like, like this Lewisham's far, you know what I'm saying? There's no underground here, you know? Like, my children are hungry, daddy, I'm hungry. Oh, you've got crisps, yeah? you got crisps, go on. Yeah, but I realise, yeah, that quality time is important, yeah? And even we as a people, I've got two funerals, I've been, I've been to, like, four funerals this month, this year already. No, thank you. Yeah, and I've got two funerals on Thursday. Why am I meeting all the man at funerals? It's long. I don't want to see none of you at a funeral. How, how you been? It's long time. I just wanted to sit here and just be at peace. I don't want to go there and have fun and party. Let's go to the park and do that. So one of the things we need, we need more social engagement. 
hundred percent. We need more socials. One another love language. This is something I've never resonated with, like giving gifts. I'm stingy, you know. You know. <laughs> How are you gonna? I'm stingy, and it's because my mum is stingy. My mum remembers, yeah, like. In January, she's been in this country 53 years. She remember the day, everything. She's got her first bill. Like every, my mum don't throw nothing away. Her, when it comes to money, don't mess with my mum. And my mum teaches me that if you can't buy three of it, don't buy it at all. Yeah. So when it comes to receiving and giving gifts, I've just never done that. But I know that some of you might do that. And if you do do that, if that's your thing, where do you get that language from? Where did you adopt it from? You have to make that internal inquiry because when we're walking out there in the street, in the wilderness, this is when it activates. Someone's looking at you. Are you going to look away? Or are you going to say, well, go on, King. Yes, Queen. We have to start spreading that within the community. This one here, this is my language. I got it from my mum. My mum had two jobs growing. I just work hard. I work hard. And I enjoy it. I do the things that I love. But I realise that some people don't see this as me showing love. You understand? you understand? So, so I, need I need to, to you know, learn, learn their language and have multiple. multiple. I need to be linguistic. linguistic. You understand what I'm saying? Is that the word? Linguistic. linguistic. Multilinguistic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah man. man. You know? You know? So, so <laughs> acts of service. service. Yeah? So, so just doing the stuff that you know someone wants, to, wants you to do, and you do it with a smile on your face. Look at that. Give this a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> and this one here is that like physical touch. Yeah, yeah, physical, physical touch. touch. Again, Again, this is a language. language. Some, Some people, we just like, we like that embrace. That we don't embrace each, each other enough. enough. You, know, you know, we do it formally, like pat on the back. All of these languages, all of us have to be versed in because we're diverse people now. Yeah, yeah. it takes a village to raise a child. I would hate for my children who are here to walk in, up and down the road. You lot have seen them and you just ignore them. We have to start acknowledging each other. Yeah. Um, so which language do you speak? So one of the things that I've got, Second. I've got something in my pocket, one second. Yeah, so I've got these cards here. So the other day, um, I put a post on Facebook, it was a true story, but I was on a train, um, I was on a Victoria line, this is the last bit as well, yeah? And I was going to Brixton, and I was sitting on a train now. Let me just sit down, I need a little prop there, you know? <laughs> I was sitting down, and two brothers came on, I can't remember from what stop, and they sat directly opposite me, yeah? And now I'm saying to myself, I looked at him, and I'm like, God. straight away, my instinct said, Davis, you need to greet that brother, you know? You need to greet him. Yeah. I looked down, I looked at his shoes. I said, oh, cool, cool, like, you know? <laughs> and then I heard my internal voice, like that voice in my head. I have an issue with it. So I mean, it's battling every day. My heart wanted to embrace him, but my mind said, Davis, are you mad? He's going to laugh at you. He's going to think you're an idiot. Why? Look at people watching you. Blah, 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 blah. I literally stood up. And I said, Wagwan King. It's like literally like that. Yeah. I was all hot and flustered, but I didn't care, innit? <laughs> I was like, woo. And then I sat back down. The guy looked and then I said, yeah, this is what I do. And then I gave him one of these cards, yeah, that I'm going to talk about in a moment, yeah. He looked at me, right? And he got up. My man walked to the other side of the carriage like this. Imagine what my brain was doing. Like, what is this guy on? Like, Wagwan. And then there was another black guy at the other side of the carriage. He went to him and he said, Wagwan King. I was just like, what? Like, my heart just, you know, like you just feel the love. You understand what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted, though. It was embarrassing for me to do that. It was embarrassing, but what's more important, my ego or my love for my brother and, and the ripple effect it will cause? A lot of the young boys that we work with at Manhood Academy, when you speak to them, especially like all this, there was another, no, yeah, there was another incident today in North London. I'm not gonna go into the details of it, but when you speak to them, they'll say one thing, they don't feel loved. Forget all of the fireworks and the smoke and all the bravado on the hood. When you speak to them on the one-to-one, -one, they'll tell you, wow. At a certain age, their mum broke their heart, their dad, something happened, and they've learned to grow up, you know, hard, because they're trying to protect the little heart that they have left. We look at them and we judge them day in and day out. We have got our hearts broken, and until we take the time to heal the heart, especially of the young boys, there's no man coming forward to save the beautiful queens out here who's working hard. We have to have that dialogue, family.
yeah? So I've got these cards here, they're called um, Smile, yeah? And what it is, it encourages everyone to be on alert 24 seven. So you might be walking Sainsbury's, you got your little, you know, your little bag, and you notice that someone needs a little hand, you go and give them a hand. And then what you do is say, all I want you to do family, I want you to return the favor to someone else, yeah? So you're paying it forward. And all of these little trinkets that we do, we've got another one that's called um, a pegaholic. That like you've got like, you know the, the garden pegs that you peg clothes? You write a positive affirmation on it. Yeah, like I think you're amazing. Young people love it. And you get them to just tag people on a train like, and just walk. And then you're walking down the road now and you put your hand in your pocket. Oh, I'm amazing, who said this? Like, <laughs> We have to make it fun because we can be so serious at times, family. We can be so serious. We have to let our inner child like run rampant. So this is myself. These are some of the love languages here. Words of affirmation. Find out which one is yours. Quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and um, physical touch. My name is Davis Williams. I've also, I'm an author of two books. Um, I don't really talk about them too much, but if you want to know more, I've got some flyers in the hair. My daughter's over here. Thank you so much. Beautiful to see everyone out and have a great time. Oh, yeah, 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 there's a question, sorry. I'm hungry, yeah. Question and answer. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, question and answer. So, one of the things that, what am to you, man? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so in terms of question and answer now, one thing that I do a lot of the young people that I work with, yeah, I tell them straight, before you get a boyfriend or whatever, make sure you send me a picture of him. No, serious. I know a lot of young boys across London, do you know? I know a lot of young people and we all know everyone. I, I, I'm always chastising my sisters who find a boyfriend, so I'm a back of yard rave. I'm all loved up. I'm like, wow, who's this guy? Like, no, we don't even know who he is, you know? They disappear, get pregnant, they come back like six months late, not even six months, but like, you know, a year late, a year and a half. Oh, where's the man? I don't know, like, um, this issues. And then when we find out who he is, we could have resolved that. Our community is tight, you know? There's not a lot of us, you know? So it's very important that we start communicating. So one of the questions that I want to ask you, because I've identified my love language, and I know what language I need to develop, and I want to throw it out there, like, based on how you were raised, like what love language was you exposed to? And that's the initial question. Because until we start to realize our household, <laughs> until we start realizing our household and the impact that it has on us, there's no point going out and trying to fix someone else's house. You have to get your own house in order first. And sometimes it's gonna to have to be you that's going to you know, um, create a new language in your home. Does that make sense? So, is anyone able to identify their love language? Okay, this is a question and answer. So that's the question. Do you have an answer? Okay, one, two, three. Can I give you the mic? Is that okay? Do I have a mic person? Yeah? All right, cool. So what's your love language is? So mine is and, and also, if you don't mind standing up and introduce yourself to the audience. We're all family, innit? We're all, are we all family? Ah, uh, so sorry. Don't be embarrassed. Good, good. Stand up now. Stand up, stand up. <laughs> Okay, so my name is Michelle. I'm here with my two friends and uh, my boyfriend who's somewhere helping us. Um, but anyway, my love language is acts of service. Um, it means so much when actually somebody does something for me and actually really supports me when I'm doing something. And I've got a little bit of all the other ones as well, but um, I think the other one is um, words of affirmation and quality time, but predominantly acts of service. And which love language were you exposed to growing up? Which one was strong in your home? I would assume it's acts of service, purely because my mother was that sort of person where she was always involved in helping other people and stuff. She wasn't really a words of affirmation kind of person. So we never really got the, oh, I love you and stuff like that. But by what she did, we could obviously always see, okay. you know, and stuff, yeah. And if there was one language you had to adopt or, in or improve, which one would it be? <laughs> Wait, 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 like, like, I'm hearing an echo now, like, brother, you got, you got something to say? Can we get the mic to the brother, please? She, she needs to improve on giving gifts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. There was another sister here in the red. 
well, basically, I'm going to mirror what my sister over there said. It's acts of service. I mean, I have a son, and he's always wanting hugs. I roll my eyes because I'm like, what do you want a hug for? You know I love you already. You know, that's kind of how we do it. But, yeah, it's acts of service. Okay. Mainly. Cool. Just by a show of hands. Okay, there's a brother over there. Thank you, sis. Thank you very much. No problem. In terms of me, it's words of affirmation and acts of service. Uh, my wife is here, uh, Mrs. Hamilton. I'm grateful to have her in present. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's acts of service and actually words of affirmation. That's my love language. But I think all five of them come into my, my attitude and way of life. And it's a pleasure being here. And thank you very much, Davis Williams. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyone else? Are there some hands at the back? All right, I'm Sandra Akunia Dawn. Greetings. And um, what I was exposed to was acts of service, like doing things for people that made, the, you know, to make them feel important. And what I had in my own household was acts of service again. And when my daughter wanted me to hug her, in fact, she's the one that woke me up. When she wanted to hug me, I always pushed her away because that's what I was used to. Mm. And she turned around, I think she was about four, four or five, and she said, mommy, every time I come to hug you, you push me away, why? And that, for me, was when I started looking into um, this love relationship. That's it for me. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Is there, there's another one at the front. I can use my mic. It's cool. Team, tag, tag team, innit? Yeah. Was it you? Hello. I'm here with my friend Brandy. Yeah, hello. Um, my name is Natasha. I'm here with my friend Brandy. And randomly yesterday, we actually did the test to find out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, randomly yesterday, me and Brandy did the test to find out what love language you were, and I was words of affirmation, and she, she was physical touch, and we, we kind of wondered whether, it is, is, is it the language of the way you receive love or the way you give love? We weren't sure which one. Yeah. No, definitely. I know for myself, and I'm going to come to you, sis, yeah? I know for myself, what I really appreciate I like to receive words of affirmation because there was a void when I was growing up. I didn't get a lot of it. I didn't get a lot of encouragement. Went football by myself. Like I didn't say, oh, well done. Or you could. So that is how I want to receive. If you want to love me, like <laughs> give me words. However, I like to give. I don't like to give words. I like to receive it. So in terms of how I show, I like to do stuff for people. You know, I like to do stuff and also like quality time as well. So, so it really depends what the question is, but what I would encourage everyone to do, because imagine if you have a child and your child needs words of affirmation and all you know is acts of service, there's going to be a discrepancy there. A lot of the young boys we work with, they actually believe that their mum don't love them. They don't believe, they, that's what they believe in their hearts of hearts. My mum don't love me, she don't care about me. Because mummy has not said words of affirmation. Mum works hard. She goes in, she does the quality time in terms of holidays, but she just doesn't communicate for whatever reason, you know, and that's a discussion for another time. So it is important that we do dabble and have an understanding of all of these different languages. Did you want to say something, sis? Um, I was just going to answer to her question, because we've done the test more, my boyfriend and I, and um, basically I think with the um, love languages, it's more about how you want to be treated and sometimes also how you give it out. And the problem that ha then happens sometimes is the way you give it out is not exactly the same way that somebody else receives it. So for example, I'll give an example for with my boyfriend and I, that I'm an acts of service person, whereas he's more for quality time. And there were so many instances where, uh, just a random example, like a simple example, where we would maybe go to a party, for example, and I would always want to be with him. I'd always want to make sure he's okay. I'd always bring him stuff. And he would be telling me, no, just go away 
away, I'm fine, just leave me. And when we would go to his friends' parties, he would leave me and I'd be like, well, you're abandoning me, like, you should be with me. But it's, that's what I'm saying, that it's the understanding what, yeah, some, you give out what you think you want to receive. Yeah, so that's, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. Okay, go on, sis. Hi, Hi my name is Maria. Uh, for me, is I grew up with acts of service, but my language is, um, is actually physical touch. I have to say that he, sub, I feel it's cultural as well because I grew up in a different country. I grew up in Portugal, and for us, physical touch, public affection is normal. So when I arrived here, that's when I realized that black people here have a lot of difficulties with. Uh, you know, the touching, the boyfriend and girlfriend touching. Where I come from, no we, no problem. Mm. We have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it might be cultural as well. Yes, Babylon. Uh, thank you, thank you, sis. Just one last thing as well, this out of curiosity, can you just raise your hands if you're single in here? This out of curiosity, can I just see show of hands? If, no, can I have a, if this was a percentage, what percentage would you give this? 15, 20 percent. And one of the reasons why I was asking, and uh, it's okay to be single, it's not a problem, by the way. You know that, right? It's not a bad thing. But what I have realized is, because I know like one of the remits was I'm like dating as well, do you know? And what I've realized is a lot of us find it difficult to date because of the way we communicate as well, do you know? A lot of brothers, they find, and I'm just talking as a man, you know, my, my fiance was supposed to be here to give that balance, but she's at the Womanhood Academy. So, you know, my views is naturally going to be one-sided. And I can't speak for sisters, and I would never try to do that, ever, because I would get annihilated, you know. It's not worth it. But as brothers, you know, when brothers date a lot of sisters, one thing that they find they don't really receive from the partner that they're dating, again, is words of affirmation. They don't receive that. And I don't know why that is, you know, but it's again, it's an inquiry. So it's very important that for anyone that is interested in dating or, you know, they've got an interest, the way you communicate, you really have to kind of leave who you are and really become a person for that person. Become someone else. You have to allow yourself to grow and you can't really bring any stuff from your past because that will impede. I've learned so much just by being in a relationship like, I've grown up and I've had to learn how to deal with my own inner child and my own insecurities and the stuff that happened when I was six, seven, eight years. I had to leave that at the door because it affected, I broke a lot of hearts because of that. So it's very important. Yeah. All right. So thank you for your time, everyone. Amazing. Please keep Rise up. the applause going for our brother, David. David. This is Kush here on Gut Kush TV, live at the Hidden Science Academy. The Hidden Science of Black Love, and what a wonderful event it's been. We've had a lot of speakers this evening. Two of our speakers we've had is Davis Williams and his wonderful daughter Michaela, here to talk about her book that she's um, put out. If you'd never heard of Davis before, you should know that he's the founder of the Manhood Academy. Also, love is not... Love is just a verb, Love is just a verb. Yeah, yeah. right? You see where I'm yeah. failing, right? <laughs> um, I was also booked upon you in Gambia, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was 2016, was out there, yeah. together for the um, homecoming event. Yeah, I you at, was you, yeah, it was out there. I was just in all day. Exactly. Like, so I think yeah. we've been knowing each other a long yeah, yeah, time, yeah, yeah. but it was nice to hear you speak tonight. Yes. Lovely to see your daughter with her book. You want to tell us a bit about your book? So my, this book is called My First Trip to Gambia and it's basically about like when I went to Gambia, like the things I saw there. Okay, and when did you go to Gambia? 2000 and... Was it 40? What time? 14 or 15. 14 it was, yeah. Yeah, 2014. And what about your experience made you want to come back and write a book? I mean, it must have been some profound things that you saw to make you want to come back and write about it. Um, well... I just like, cause I thought like there was like animals around everywhere and there wasn't really that much animals. But the only animals you saw was cats. <laughs> and I thought there was lions, like lions around. Cause like the things you saw on TV, when you actually go there, there's not really, exactly. you don't really see that much things there. So the kind of perception that they give about Africa, like everybody lives in like a jungle, you see lions walking past the house and you see mud huts everywhere. Was that your experience in Gambia? 
No. It was like vibrant and there was lots of like nice houses there and um, nice people and all that. So can you just tell us what your book is about? I mean, and who is it, who is it aimed towards? Is it for adults, for children or? Um, it's, it's mostly for children around like, because I wrote this book when I was nine, so like nine to 12, and now I'm 12, so nine to 12 year olds. And, um, and it's basically like, so when I went there, I saw like where the slaves slept and all that. Okay. And it was kind of like, a good experience. So you talked about some of, the, some of the historical things that you find out there, some of the everyday lifestyle, the colours, you know, the different activities you got up to, right? To the market as well, maybe the market, we've got, we've got your outfit done as well. Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you a secret? These are made in Gambia. <laughs> yeah. So there's one thing out there you see a lot of, you know, you see a lot of tradition and stuff and it's good that you when you've been to Africa and experienced the other side because, you know, if you look on the mainstream TV, Right, you, that's the only kind of perception you see. That's why you need Got Coach TV to give you that opposite perception. So, where can we get your book if you want to buy your book? Well, there's um, my dad's setting up a, a website, mm -hmm. and um, you can also get online, I think, and um, there'll be an email address as well. Okay, well, we look forward to that. Make sure you keep us updated. Yes, yeah, so we can get your book promoted and get those sales going. And I want to congratulate you. I mean, most adults haven't even read a book, much less written a book. And you wrote this book at nine years old. So have you got any plans to write any other books? Well, I'd like to go to like, different other countries that like, I've never been to before and like, um, write like this, like books like this. Okay, so you can go to different countries and give a different perspective. That's absolutely excellent. Daddy, you must be proud. I'm so proud of my little girl, man. She got a book. It's not even available yet, do you know? Like, this is the pro Exclusive. We've got the exclu what? exclusive to me. Like, today, we're just getting a lot of pictures for the website, you know? So once the website is live, then we're going to do a book launch and, you know? Yeah, we're going to, you know, release it on the world, man. So I'm very proud of her, you know? And it's a beautiful story as well, you know? When she was out there, she was shook, like she was scared. There was talks of Ebola being everywhere as well. So when we went there, it was in the middle of all of that. Do you know what I mean? So did you get Ebola? No. Uh, did you get malaria? No. <coughs> did, you, did you starve? No. <laughs> all I had to do was get injections. Did you even get bit? Yeah. Uh, did you get bit? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you get bit everywhere. You get bit in England. You know what I mean? Like in the summertime, you get bit everywhere. So it's not exclusive to Africa, you know, and it's not a reason not to go and visit the wonderful continent. Because, you know, Gambia just has one country. We have to remember Africa is a huge continent. Yeah, it was a pleasure speaking to you today. Any final message you'd like to leave with us today? No, nah, man, like, they no. support the youth coming up. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah, like, peace and love. Peace and love. Black love in the house. In the house, you heard it right here on Gut Kush TV.